All right, let's get started with uh, page four of the 2011 fall exam one. Uh, in this page, we're going to be doing some true and false questions and a question about BlackBerry cell phones. So first, let's get through the true and false. So first, part A, a study reported that 95%, a 95% confidence interval for a population proportion of all Americans who attend religious services regularly to be 0.43 to 0.66. If the study repeated a large number of times, then the interval will capture the population proportion, approximately 95% of the studies. This is false. The reason is because um, if we repeat the study a large number of times, we're going to get different intervals as a result of different people being sampled and you know different studies being conducted. So 95% of those resulting intervals will we'll contain it in approximately 95% of the studies, but that doesn't mean this interval will. It's either going to contain it or it doesn't. So that's either in 0 or 100%. We just don't know if it does contain it or if it doesn't. All right, so for the next one, statistics can vary from sample to sample or as parameters of fixed values. This is true. Statistics will vary depending on who you sample, but parameters are for your whole population and when you conduct a survey, if you know the, that your whole population isn't changing, they're either going to say one, they're going to, you know, have their own response. And while that may change if you survey them uh, 10 years down the road, at the time you are conducting the survey, your parameter, the, the whole population won't change, and thus your parameter won't change. Next, we should decide on the significance level alpha before looking at the data. This is true. Um, if you you know if you look at your data and then conduct a p get a p value, you can always just pick an alpha that's slightly more than your p value just to say that you rejected. That's bad practice. Uh, you should pick a significance level alpha in which you're going to reject or fail to reject uh, your hypotheses uh, before you look at the data, and that tolerance should be decided on how much error you're allowing yourself for type one or type two. Lastly, a QQ plot determines whether a sample is normal. Uh, this is false. While we do look at sample data on a QQ plot, we're not using the QQ plot to determine if a sample is normal, but if the underlying population is normal. So that's bad there. All right. Let's move on to blackberries. OK. So suppose that 40% of all UM faculty members own a BlackBerry cell phone. A random sample of 300 UM faculty members will be selected, and the sample proportion P hat that own a BlackBerry cell phone will be determined. So now we want to find what the possible values of the sample proportion P hat are. And we're going to make a detailed sketch of the distribution of all such P hat values if we were to take repeated random samples of these faculty members. So the name, we need to get the name of this distribution and uh, with the values to completely specify this distribution. So on the formula card, it specifies for us what the sample proportion uh, p hat distribution is. So let's open up our formula card here. And for sample, uh, the sampling distribution of p hat here is what we're looking for. So if the sample size n is large enough, namely n times p and n times 1 minus p are greater than 10, then p is approximately normal, that's what the n there is, with um, mean p and standard deviation square root p times 1 minus p over n. All right, so let's go back here. So... You know it's going to be a normal p square root of p times 1 minus p over n distribution. So now we need to get our p and our n. So it says here, suppose that 40% of all UM faculty members own a BlackBerry cell phone. That's a parameter. That's our p, because we know for all UM faculty members, it's 40%. And the sample that we're going to take is 300 to determine some p hat. So the possible values this could take follow this normal distribution. So we know now it's normal. Um, 0.4 is the mean. And it'd be 
0.4 times 1 minus 0.4 over 300, our sample size that we're taking. And if we, sam if we simplify what's in that square root, that's 0.4 and then 0 0.0283. Okay, I'm actually going to erase this now and rewrite it to give myself room to draw. So this Point zero two eight three. Okay. And if you recall, most of our data should be contained within three standard deviations of our data. And three standard deviations, that's three times point zero two eight three. That's about point oh eight four nine. Okay. So we know we're going to be centered right here at point 0.4. And we draw our bell curve, and most of the data looks like it's coming out to about point 0.8. So that's a reasonable drawing of the distribution. And of course, don't forget to label it. And the axes have already been labeled for us p-hat, as these are all possible p-hat values. All right, and then lastly, we need the probability of seeing a sample proportion as high as 0.45 or even higher. So we want the probability p that we get a p-hat that's as high or even higher than 0.45. So we know the distribution of p-hat, but working with a normal 0.4 0 0.0283 distribution, we don't really know how to calculate probabilities with that. We do, though, know how to calculate prob probabilities with a standard normal, normal 0, 1. So let's go ahead and convert this 0.45 to a z-score. So to do that, we're going to find the probability that standard normal is greater than 0.45, but now we subtract off the mean, 0.4, and then divide by the standard deviation, 0 0.0283. <coughs> Simplifying the z-score, we get probability that a standard normal is greater than or equal to 1.77. So at this point, we can look up uh, 1.77 on our formula card. So let's go back to the formula card. And if we go through all the pages here, this is our normal table here. So we want to look up 1.77, so I'll zoom in here. So 1.70123457. So then here is the value we're looking for. Uh, so this is the 0.7 column in the 1.7 row. But remember, this is area to the left. So this would be the probability of getting something less than 1.77. Oops. So what we want then, what we, what we found is probability of z less than 0.177. We of course can use the complement rule though. As we know this is equal to 1 minus probability z less than 1.77. And that's what we just found. So that's equal to 1 minus 0.9616. And that gets our final answer of 0 0.384. All right, that's it for this page. Uh, best of luck, Sonia.